What's up everyone and welcome back to Nexus. When I was a kid, I was never actually allowed to go on water slides and for years I thought my parents were just being paranoid. After all, what could be safer than a soaking wet plastic tube people throw you down in a rubber ring? Uh, well lots of things it turns out, like not going near a water park ever again, which may be your mindset after you watch this video of 5 banned water slides you can't ride anymore. All banned for a good reason. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get new content similar to this every day. Also make sure to comment down below letting us know which was your favorite. And for this video, let's see if we can hit the golden like button which is a thousand likes, so make sure to drop a like down below. Number 5 What's the most infamous water park in the world? It is of course Action Park for probably a hundred different reasons. It was opened in 1978, I guess when people cared a whole lot less about health and safety, and it closed in 1996 because people kept dying. Crazy, right? It was located in New Jersey in the US, and while the dry areas of this park were no stranger to casualties, the most people got injured and died in the biggest water world area. The most ridiculous thing they had there is the Cannonball Loop, which is the basis for more than a few urban myths about the dangers of water parks, and just stupidity in general I guess. Basically, the cannonball loop was an enclosed water slide that went down and then around in a loop. There are more than a few water slides today that have loops, but the thing about those is they're not perfect circles. Even on roller coasters, all loops are either corkscrews or ovals, because the thing about perfect circles is the g-force of going around one can break your neck. Reportedly, employees at Action Park were used to test this slide, getting bribed with $100 each to go down it and prove they didn't die. There were also rumors that the crash test dummies that park officials used came out of the bottom decapitated and dismembered. This isn't even the only death trap from Action Park. The wave pool was unfondly nicknamed the Grave Pool by locals, which was so dangerous they had 12 lifeguards on duty at all times, and multiple people drowned in it. Here at Action Park, it's been closed since 1996. They reopened it on June 14th. So I gotta ask you, because Action Park got a bit of a reputation back, um, some people got injured. How are you addressing the safety this time around? Well, that was 30 years ago. The world has changed. I mean, when my dad started the park, he was the guy inventing the rides and bringing inventors in. Now it's highly regulated. Everything's engineered. We've brought back all the thrills, but none of the spills. Number four. The Wild Rapids Water Slide Park sadly closed last year. This water park is in Canada, and while it hasn't been closed because of an abundance of gory fatalities, it'll be sad to see it go, locals and fans of the attraction say. It was open for 34 years, but unfortunately it just got too expensive to run. It was the only outdoor water park in that area of Canada. Though in my opinion, it seems pretty weird that they'd build a water park outdoors in Canada anyways. I understand they dry out water parks, but wouldn't it still get damaged when everything freezes for the winter? At any rate, indoor water parks generate revenue all year round, instead of just in the summer, so it's kind of just waiting for its eventual end anyway. When it was open, it had 12 slides, most of which connected to a tower. It had four large towers, each of them with varying degrees of extremeness. The first set was the children's slides, which had friendly names like Tickles, Squiggles, and Cinnamon Twist. Then you get to what they call the intermediate class of water slides, which are called Body Blaster and one kind of outdated slide named after the James Bond movie Octopussy. Then you've got the river-themed advanced class rides, one called Hell's Gate and a second called Rio Grande. Finally is the extreme class. One of them is a sidewinder half-pipe slide, but the other two are both named after types of suicide, which is kind of weird. Kamikaze where you blow yourself up, and Harikari where you kill yourself with your own sword. Hey guys, we are, me and Layton are entering the abandoned Sylvan Lake water park. As you can see, the slides right there are literally just a drop off to a certain death. It started right there. It used to be a huge contraption, but now it's like the drop of doom water slide there, where it just drops straight off. So we're gonna see if we can find another way to get up there. Yeah. So now we're gonna, I don't know, maybe take one last look around and then, and then head out. Number three. Calypso Water Park probably sounds like a nice place to go, but in 2015, the park, located in Ontario, was accused of 20 charges of safety violations. The nine of those were withdrawn by a prosecutor, bringing the total to 11, and then the judge found the park guilty of six. Six is still bad, but doesn't sound as bad as the 20 it was actually accused of originally. The bobsled ride and the steamer slide are the two main offenders here. A crash on the bobsled was, according to the prosecutor, absolutely preventable so you have to wonder why they didn't prevent it. Anyway, there was a collision in the tube that meant one guy was literally thrown out of the ride and knocked unconscious on concrete, which is pretty bad. 
And then a poor girl named Sophie St. Jacques was put in a halo for four months, which is where they put screws in your head to stop you from moving too much. This happened to her because she broke her back in two places on the steamer. Nothing was even done about this, because a month later somebody broke their collarbone doing the same thing. According to the trial, the steamer was the cause of 10 different injuries and two of these were spinal injuries. And then the safety authority weren't even told about all this until three months later when the park was already shut down for that season. Kind of outrageous. Number 2 Another sad story about a park that was much loved by the general public and tourists from all around the world is the Wet n Wild Park run by Universal Studios. Just a couple months ago on New Year's Eve of 2016, this water park officially went down, closing after more than 35 years. But why would a huge film company like Universal close a prime attraction in a tourist hotspot like Orlando, Florida? But fear not, because the main reason it was closed down is because Universal decided it just wasn't good enough and they're going to build a whole new water park called Volcano Bay sometime later this year. And the rides at Wet n Wild aren't being demolished, they're just being taken apart and moved a short journey to the Volcano Bay site. Kind of makes you wonder why they have to build an entirely new park if they're just reusing the same old attractions they had before. Universal also wants to use this land to carry on expanding their Orlando Resort, probably in an effort to have it complete with Disney World. Then again, I guess Disney is good and all, but Universal does have the Harry Potter franchise to draw in customers. So while it's sad that it's closed, at least if you're a fan of it, you'll be able to ride its best water slides again in Volcano Bay. After almost 40 years of offering visitors and locals a chance to cool off from the Florida heat, Wet n Wild will soon become a memory from Orlando's past. We heard it was closing, so we got season passes for the last, last splash. Wet n Wild is owned by Universal Studios, which is building a new next-generation water park called Volcano Bay. It's set to open next summer. Despite the anticipation of the new water park, there's some sadness over the closing of Wet n Wild. Number 1. Once upon a time, the Verrucht water slide was the biggest water slide in the entire world. It was nearly 170 feet tall, and you could find it in a water park in Kansas City. In many ways, the fate of this water slide wasn't the fault of the slide at all, and probably more to blame is the employee at the top who organizes people into the rafts. It's an interesting story of physics how one 10-year-old boy came to die on it. Unlike Action Park, the Verrucht has only claimed one life, and thankfully the people who run the park saw a reason and had the water slide closed down immediately following the boy's death. It's a pretty gruesome story since the boy in question ended up decapitated because the weight distribution in the three-person raft was unequal. The boy was in the front while two larger and older women were in the back behind him. This caused the raft to launch in the air with the momentum of going down the first slide, and the poor kid's head got caught on a metal bar. Even the women behind him suffered injuries, one of them ending up with a broken jaw and the other with multiple stitches in her face. It really does seem like what happened on this ride is just a sad accident and isn't the result of any gross mismanagement like some of the earlier examples on this list. 